Monday. Welcome to the vlog. I want to do another weekly vlog, just like a week in my life, because I actually really enjoyed doing the last one. And I feel like I really want to do another one. I don't know what this week is going to consist of reading wise, but I definitely think there might be some more Attack on Titans and some more movies, but it's Movie Monday. And I went to the movies today. I watched Oppenheimer for the second time. I watched it yesterday at 1030 in the morning, my first time. Absolute 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 for me. Okay. I've decided I am a Christopher Nolan fan and I bought my Oppenheimer tickets the day they came out, the day they released on sale. And I got the 1030 show. I feel like I had the perfect seats because the Lincoln Center AMC, the Lincoln Square AMC is the only theater playing it in 70 millimeter IMAX. Okay. And I saw a trailer for it in that on that IMAX screen. And I was like, I need to see this film on this screen. So I watched it on IMAX and it's beautiful. It is a beautiful film. And the casting, Christopher Nolan knows how to pick a beautiful older man, a beautiful older white man, because his cast, amazing. His cast was stacked. It's crazy because both movies out right now, Oppenheimer and Barbie, both casts stacked. I haven't seen Barbie yet. I'm gonna see it on Wednesday, but I've seen Oppenheimer twice, two days in a row both times 10 out of 10. Just Cillian Murphy. I never know if his name is Cillian, Cillian or Cullian Murphy. I should probably look that up. But him and just like Matt Damon was in it. Freaking the guy from The Boys. Remy Malik is in it. RDJ is in it. And he slays. He's petty AF, but he, he, he slays. Okay. And Cillian Murphy as Oppenheimer, that man's bone structure. Wow. I've always liked him and I've always thought he was good looking and amazing and i like i first saw him in uh 28 days later and i knew from that moment i was like i love this man and i watch everything that he's in and i have so far but i also think he might be in peaky blinders and i haven't watched that i'm telling you like the whole cast they just ate and it was it was just that film is is beautifully shot the i will say this is one of Christopher Nolan's better scored films because I recently watched Interstellar and the first time I had watched it, I was like, something is wrong with the sound. It was horrible. The sound mixing horrible, too loud, too screechy. But I rewatched Interstellar on my TV and I was like, wow, that's a beautiful film. And the sound is also beautiful. But this one, this movie Oppenheimer had the culmination, the trifecta of good sound mixing and scoring beautiful older white men and engaging plot engaging plot and so the trifecta of those i think it's a great film this might be this might be one of my favorites by him which is kind of wild because inception was my favorite for a long time and nothing really beat it except i really do love prestige but again that's like a sleeper but this one was, I want to see it again. Like that's, and that's crazy. And I have a feeling I will be seeing it again. I don't know when, but it's going to happen. So that was my movie Monday. I also went to the bookstore and I got my hands on some things that I've really been wanting. So let me show those to you. Should I have gone to the bookstore and done a little haul? No, but I wanted to. It's Monday and on Mondays I treat myself. So I treated myself to some books, four books to be exact. The first book I got and I've been wanting, it took me a week to get my hands on this, Small Worlds. I wanted to get this the day it came out, but the Barnes and Noble that I usually go to is the one that I used to work at and they didn't have it. So my lovely friend, she ordered one for me. She's a lifesaver. She's an angel, a goddess. And here it is. Oh, I'm so excited to read this. I loved, loved open water. So, and I love that all the, the theme for like both books is similar as far as like the covers. So this is about a father and son though. So I'm interested to read this. Probably going to do a reading vlog like solely dedicated to this because I have been waiting for this book for a long time. I finally got my hands on a copy of Happy Place. I have been holding off because I wanted to do a reading vlog reading all of Emily Henry's like rom-com books because I've only read Beach Read and I still need to read other people or people we meet on vacation and 
uh, book lovers. And so I was going to do that. And then I was going to do a whole thing of me like going to get happy place. But I'm just like, let me just get it. It's Monday. I want to treat myself. So I got happy place and I will be reading this. I feel like the romances that I like have been reading have been really intense <laughs> and I just want something cute. And I know this book is not going to be cute. I'm really excited to read this. And I've heard that this is not like any of her other books. And I kind of love that. I kind of love that. I kind of love growth in authors. And I feel like people are very divided on this book, but I'm excited. And Barnes and Noble had, they had two different editions. They had one that was like the pink and white uh, cover. And then one that was like yellow and white. And I decided to get the pink and white one before they only had the, the yellow and white, but now they have the pink and white. So that's the one I wanted. And that's the one I got. Also the Waterstones edition with the amazing sprayed edges is sold out. That's the one I really tried to get, but they don't have it anymore. Or actually they do. It's only click and like pick up. And I don't live in the UK, obviously. So, and it's a Waterstones exclusive. So I won't be getting it. I don't think unless I travel to the UK, which I might have to just to get a book. I would do that. I would travel to another country just to get a book. I've traveled to other states just to get books. So anyway, and then I got two other paperbacks. I got Killers of the Flower Moon. I don't think I've read anything by David Grant. Have I? I don't remember. But as we all know, Scorsese is making a new film about this book. And... I didn't realize like what this was about. I saw the trailer again watching when I watched Oppenheimer and I was like, this looks really good. So I want to read the book. Uh, and it sucks because it's already, I missed out. I was too late. It already says like soon to be a motion picture and it's not a sticker. It's on there. But at least I got the regular cover and not the movie cover because I'm sure it's not going to be good. And last but not least, I got The Seven Year Slip. It's by the same author as the dead romantics and i haven't read the dent romantics yet i do have it but i love like a time traveling kind of like different time zone places books romance i love that kind of stuff as you know i love like romances that span years and this is kind of like a i guess they they meet and and they are one of them lives six six years in the future which what a co what a wild concept. I haven't bought like a rom com -y, colorful color cover book in a long time. And I, every time I go, I like look at them, but nothing really like catches my eye lately. But this one, I've heard good things and I wouldn't read that. So those are the four books I got. I'm excited to read them. And I'm going to eat because I'm hungry. And I need to call my mother and I want to edit a little bit more, but I go back to work tomorrow. So yeah, see you tomorrow. You're already on my mind when it gets late. I always realize that I need you. Are you thinking about me too tonight? Hi. Good morning. Happy Thursday. I can't believe it's already Thursday. I think I started this vlog on Sunday, kind of Monday. I think Monday is the last day you like heard me talk. So I feel like this is going to be like much shorter weekly vlog than my last, than my last one. Tuesday, I did absolutely nothing. I sat on the couch and watched the flash the entire day. The depression was depressioning very hard. So I sat in a dark room and watched the flash um ordered some food comfort food um and that was that and then wednesday i was able to get up the depression wasn't depressioning as much which is nice and i went to work i i feel like no i saw barbie yesterday how could i forget i saw barbie yesterday okay so yes i saw oppenheimer twice and I saw Barbie yesterday, and then I'm going to see Barbie again tomorrow. So I've seen both of them twice. By the time this video comes out, I'll have seen both films twice, which to me, that makes sense. Like, I need to see both films twice. Barbie, actually, I guess I, I don't feel like I need to see it again, but there is, 
a vlog I want to do surrounding Barbie and books. So I do kind of want to see it again to really understand the themes in the movie. But let's talk about Barbie because I spent a whole time talking about Oppenheimer because I'm obsessed with Oppenheimer and I'm definitely going to see that again. So that will be three times. I have a feeling I'm going to see Oppenheimer just like I'm just going to be like, what am I doing today? What time is Oppenheimer playing? Oh, let me go see it. Like, that's what it feels like to me because I just loved it so much. And Barbie, I really liked Barbie. Like, I, it's like a 4.5, 4.75 out of 5. I don't know what that, what that little 0. 0.5 or 0. 0.25 for me is missing. I haven't really explored it. Maybe when I see it tomorrow, the rating might change. I thought the cast was great. I thought Margot Robbie, top notch. She, she is Barbie. And I thought how, how aware of itself the film is, was great. And Ken, I mean, Ryan Gosling as Ken, hilarious. And I thought he did a great job. And the fact that three people, three actors and actresses from Sex Education are in that film, I thought that was amazing. Three people from Sex Education that are in the film are Nikuti Gatwa. I don't know if I pronounced his name right. Emma Mackey and Connor Swindles, which is, he plays the best friend uh, and then Maeve and then the best friend's boyfriend. And so like to see all three of them together and there are certain scenes where Emma Mackey and Kuti Gatwa, Nikuti Gatwa are paired up together. And I was just like, this is just speaking to my sex education heart. And I know that Greta Gerwig knew what she was doing when she did that. So I just thought that was cute. I thought that was like a little nod to sex education and it was subconsciously or not or not. I don't know. I just thought it was cute. But really like the first part of the movie, it really was like, I want to be a Barbie. Like I want to be Barbie. I don't, I think I played with Barbies. I think I had a dream house. I, I feel like I did. That was a long time ago, but honestly I was like, oh, I want a Barbie. I need to buy a Barbie at this point. And America Ferrera in that film, also fantastic. That speech she gives had me in tears. I was just like, it's so hard to be a woman. Like, it was so crazy. The way that she delivers the speech with such conviction and just, like, acknowledging all the reasons why it's – why women have such a tough time or the standards that they're held to in society and why they're problematic – just it was just amazing that speech i was like literally wiping my tears it was i don't know it was great it was it was a great film and i'm excited to see it again and while i have zero pink clothing and i did not wear pink to see the film i think i wore the same outfit to see oppenheimer and barbie all black <laughs> i wore all black and obviously a coed and cambria shirt to see both films it's fitting for me to wear all black to both films honestly but I don't know. It was, uh, it was a fun time, but it was, it's a very feminist film and I love that. We love that. And it's very self-aware and I appreciate that. I will say I'm not like a huge fan of Greta Gerwig. <gasps> Please don't come for me. I tried Frances Hall. I need to give Frances Hall another chance. I thought Pretty Woman was okay, but Barbie's definitely, and I mean Lady Bird. I did like Lady Bird. Okay. I did like Lady Bird, but I think this is like my favorite film by her and this will make me want to go back and I'll give Frances Ha another chance. I also loved how diverse the movie was for Barbie. There were all different kinds of Barbies and I absolutely love that. I, I was worried, but if you're talking about Barbie, Barbie is now diverse. So to have as many Barbies and the different Kens in there was great. And I mean, all kinds of Barbies. It was I was, I, it was great. And we know I love Issa and her as President Barbie. Like, I just, Issa's just a bad bitch. Like, she's the main reason I went to see the film because I love Issa Rae. So it was just, it was great. I, I gotta buy some pink clothes because I wanna be a Barbie and I wanna be able to feel as if I can do anything that I can, anything that I want, anything that I, my heart desires, I can do and achieve. And that's what I feel like the movie wants us to to know and barbie is like you can do anything you set your mind to anything you want anything you set your heart to and i thought that was very sweet i think kids should watch the movie too um i didn't think it was going to be made for kids like i'm like okay this is barbie for adults but i do think like 
te- especially teenage girls, like young girls, teenage girls, even boys. Like I feel like actually everybody should watch the film. It was good. So that's my review on Barbie. That's my very weird short review on Barbie. But anyway, today is Thursday and I have to work later, of course. And I just worked out and yesterday my internet went out, which was hella annoying. And so a tech is going to come, but my internet's back. But also they're supposed to give me better internet because I pay a lot for shitty internet, which I don't understand. I don't understand the cost of internet with the quality that we get. But anyway, onto the good stuff. I, <sighs> Kennedy has gotten me. Like, I read Long Shot. If you see my, if you saw my last vlog, I read Long Shot. I read Hook Shot. Wait, is this Hook Shot? No, I read Long Shot and Block Shot. And I just finished the Block Shot epilogue this morning. I started this a couple of days ago, but I'm reading Hook Shot. I'm actually reading the physical book because the other ones I read on my Kindle. But I have the physical book of all of them, but I don't know why. But I haven't held a physical book in a while. So I was like, oh, let me just read this. So I'm reading this. And this is like age gap. Kenny is the only one that would make me be able to deal with age gap. Because age gap is probably one of my least favorite tropes. But I'll read anything that Kennedy writes. And the age gap isn't, I think it's like 11 years. And the guy's a single dad. Single dad, age gap. And it's like. I guess I could call it friends to lovers, but friends that have like a lot of sexual tension. So it's it's two people that have been through a lot and are going through a lot, but still it's like maybe right person, wrong time that they are right for each other, but they have to work some of their, through some of their own trauma before they can actually be together. So they're going to be friends instead which could be a little dangerous and that's what it's proving to be. So it is it is kind of like a friends to lovers type of story. So I can deal with the age gap. 11 years isn't too bad. He's 36, she's 25. I guess, you know, it's not 50 and 25. I don't know. So it's not horrible. It's not the worst age age gap I've I've encountered. Like I said, Kennedy I would read Kennedy's grocery list at this point. So, you know, there's that. But I like the story so far. I'm not very far in. That's not true. I am 100, 100-ish pages in, I want to say. 123. I'm on 123 in. And let me just show you what I'm using as a bookmark. Uh, my manager knows that I loved Oppenheimer. I told her I saw it twice. And she gave me this cute, this amazing Oppenheimer film strip. And I was like dying to get one of these and our other theaters had them and I got one. She gave me one. So that like made my day. I need to figure out how to frame this. That's when I, if anybody knows a place to get like cute frames and the ones on Amazon are not giving. So if anyone knows where to get like cute film strip frames, let me know. But that's my bookmark right now because I didn't want to mess it up and the book is obviously flat. I think that's it for now. I think I need to eat. And yeah, see you later. It is Saturday night. Actually, it's Sunday. Oh my God. I am 20 hours away from Beyonce. Okay. 20 hours away from seeing Beyonce. Can't even believe it, to be honest. It's happening. It's here. It's crazy. But today was such an overwhelming day. Like, I don't even think I vlogged yesterday. I, what did I do yesterday? I worked. Oh, I saw Barbie. I saw Barbie for the second time. And that's an important film. But anyway, moving on because I'm seeing Beyonce in 20 hours, okay? And I am such a last minute person. It's like, it's almost frustrating how last minute I am. Like I get frustrated with myself, how much of a procrastinator I am. I also didn't get my ticket until like two days ago, but I need an outfit. I wanted some jean shorts. I have some jean shorts. They don't fit me the way I'd like them to fit me. So I went shopping, obviously at like the height peak hours of shopping time on a Saturday down on, in Soho. Worst time I could have probably decided to go shopping. So I went to Zara because I heard they have a bunch of silver things. I get there, it's mainly Barbie things. And then it's just so packed. Like I have to leave. Like I, it's just so overwhelming. 
I hate shopping. Let me preface this by saying I hate shopping. I have had body issues my entire life and oh, the idea of shopping is like traumatizing. Like I was like tearing up. Like it's just, I don't know. And I don't know. I think it's, I, I don't find a lot of things I like. Fashion has changed a lot and well, it's really a cycle a lot, I guess. And because I felt like I was in the 90s, which when I was in the 90s, I was a much smaller human. Obviously I was very young, so that stuff made sense to wear. But now I'm like, what is this stuff? <laughs> but I just couldn't find anything I liked. It's I, the size I am now, which not a bad size, but it's harder to find things depending where I go. And I just, it was a lot, it was a lot, okay? So I went to Zara, didn't find anything. And then I went to American Eagle because I knew they'd have shorts and I knew they'd have my size because I used to shop at American Eagle all the time. So I got, I have a little haul, a little, I have a little fashion haul. But let me just preface also by saying I did not find a top. So my outfit is not complete. Anyway, I got some shorts. I got these cute little shorts. These actually look a lot like my other shorts uh, that I currently have but I love shorts with rips. And the thing I like about these is they're long. I like long shorts. I got thighs, I got a booty, and I got hips, okay? And chafing is not fun, okay? So I like my shorts a little bit longer, and I just feel like they're a little bit more flattering to my body personally right now. So I got some of these cute shorts. And I know I wanna wear shorts like this. I'm probably gonna wear these with like a bodysuit, that would be ideal. So I need to figure out where I can get a bodysuit in the span of the next like 15 hours. And then because I also never buy clothes. Like clothes, when I think about the list of priorities, like obviously paying my rent and things like that, books are like probably my first priority of like hobbies. Clothes, I don't even think about clothes. And I've always said that if I were to ever make it big in something, I don't know, in whatever world it would be, if I ever had money, I would want to get, I would want to hire a stylist. So if anybody's out there that wants to style me, like hit me up because not that I have money to pay, but like I would love fashion advice because I have no style. My style right now is banties, which I want to incorporate my band tees into my style. I literally wear a Coheed and Cambria shirt like every day and jeans or sweats. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I just did not used to dress like that and I loved the way I used to dress. And I think I've just gotten, I've just gotten away from that. And I would love to get back to just feeling more comfortable in my skin, obviously. But anyway, I did buy one piece of item that's not one piece of item, one item that's not for the show, but it's just for me. I got these long green, like little, pa these pants. I don't even know, like you, these, this thing is called like utility pants. I don't know, but they're called Dreamy Drape Super High Rise Baggy Wide Leg. A bitch has not worn a wide leg pant since high school, okay? But I love this color green. This is like the olive green and they're super wide leg. I put them on, they were so comfortable. So comfortable. And I was like, why are these pants so comfortable? I'm getting them. Tomorrow morning, I literally have to go to Zara again at like 10 a.m. I'm not going to the same Zara, I'm not. I'm going to a different Zara and I'm gonna try and do that. But then I have to do my hair and I have to be at Port Authority by four o'clock. So I have so much to do tomorrow and i just need to get a top that's all i need to do if i can find a top please god let me buy find a top that's that's all i need i'll see you tomorrow for beyonce today's the day it's beyonce day and now i have to go find a top i have to go find a top oh it's gonna be such a long day it's gonna be such a long day but it's all gonna be worth it it's all gonna be worth it to say i was a part of this historic tour okay oh i'm so excited so I'm about to go to um, Zara. They open at 10 o'clock and I'm gonna see what they have. I'm going to the Zara at the low, in lower Manhattan by the World Trade Center because, or the Oculus, because I don't wanna go back to the one near on Soho. I don't want to, but they open at 10. A bitch is gonna be the first customer there. I'm taking everybody along on this adventure. Let's go. There's 
done, earrings are on, I need to do my makeup, and I need to put all my clothes on. I'm ahead of schedule. I'm ahead of schedule. All right, time to do my makeup, and I have my fan like right there because I feel like I'm gonna sweat. I haven't been sweating all day, which actually is pretty good, but never know. I have this like NYX uh, glitter packet. It's so glitter cream palette. It's so old, but it's like my trusty palette. And I love wearing glitter. I wear this like when I feel like just when if I'm ever going out, which I like rarely do, but like some days I just love to wear glitter. Even to work, like I'll just wear it because I love. I love the glitter on the eyes. So tell me we'll be on a day, babe. I could keep that same energy. When you go low, I go low too. But you'd rather stay high, I know you. Can we stay high, babe? Watching um, Too Hot to Handle, season five. Yes, I can't believe we're on five seasons of this show. But I need some music. So what are we going to put on? Obviously, Renaissance. I'm that girl. outfit today uh, or the last two days and I'm gonna wear these shorts they are like high-waisted I'm gonna wear my docs so I feel like this will be good it's giving this bodysuit is giving very single ladies I realize so we're just gonna go with that my, like I said I got this jewelry so let me figure this out I think we're gonna do that I think that's how it goes Oh, I'm so bad at this. I'll get, okay. Earrings, necklace, rings, watch, check. Here's the final look. Shoes, jeans, necklaces, and we're off. We're gonna get her on our way to Medline to see their leave. Live your life within the moment, moment. And don't go wait until the morning. You never know when it is over, over All that I know is we'll get older, older So let us dance this side of way It is 3.41 a.m. Okay, I just got back from the Renaissance tour from the Beyonce concert. I survived, I thrived. Whew, what a show. I, I just got back from, I would say probably the best live performance I've ever seen seen just everything that went into her show jesus christ and she sounded so good i was i've seen her before on the on the run tour when she was with jay-z but this was like insane and our seats were amazing and we got a full level view of everything and she just sounded so good it was crazy i'm like wow and her f outfits, the fashion, the visuals. When she opened, she opens with Dangerously in Love and I got chills, okay? I often get chills with music. Uh, I get chills when I hear Jennifer Hudson sing and I'm telling you from Dream Girl, Dream Girls every time. I don't normally get chills when I hear Beyonce sing, but 
when she's saying dangerously in love, chills, just straight chills. It just, it was so beautiful. It was insane. And she, oh man, I'm just, the dancers, iconic. The fashion, iconic. The visuals. Also, she gives Afrofuturism. Like her whole thing is about space and science and robots and AI and the future. It's crazy. I'm like, this is Afrofuturism. Like, this is awesome. I just wish that I like had endless money so I could just go and see it again and again and again. Like I wanna go to the California shows, but they are pricey. I'm about to go to Kentucky because Kentucky has some lots of seats open and affordable. So, but I'm definitely, my voice is gonna be gone tomorrow. Uh, not gone, but it'll, my throat's already like, <laughs> I need some water. Cause I was screaming and singing and dancing and oh, it was just a vibe. We were at a club, we were at club renaissance. Like that was the vibe. We were at a club and it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. And of course, Blue Ivy came out and danced. She did Black Parade, which is like the most iconic, for me, like the, the iconic song that came out in 2020, Black Parade. Oh, just an amazing song. And they do that, she does that song. And knowing that she did that song, like knowing that she was gonna do that song was like really special to me because I just, it got me through some tough times during the pandemic, um, but I love that song. And my favorite song right now on Renaissance, her album is Move and she performed Move and I lost it because I love that song. <laughs> oh my God, so much. You girl's tired, but I did get some merch. I'm upset though, okay? Because there were two, there was basically two, I always like to get a hoodie but I didn't feel like her hoodies were worth 150 bucks or something, or like 125, 150. They were really plain. Like my Coheed and Cambria hoodie that I got is beautiful. It has full design on it. It's, and it was worth it. It wasn't, I don't think it was even close to 125, but it was, it, it's worth it. But this one was, hers were really plain, which like made me so sad. And then I wanted this long sleeve shirt that had like, the horse on it in green, kind of like a neon green, and it had something on the side. And I couldn't, I went to two different merch areas and I didn't see it there. And then I saw a girl with it. So I'm like, where the hell was that one? But that's okay, I didn't get that one, that's all right. But I did get, I did get this. This is awesome. This is her voguing and it says, renaissance world tour and i also got this other shirt with a big ass photo of her on it and then on the back it has like the cities for the tour so but the thing that sucks is that i got this in a medium and then i got this in a large and like i wish this was bigger so that means this is going to be small so i don't know but yeah, I love buying merch at shows because I feel like you can't get it anywhere else. But I know that she has a, uh, she dropped merch on Amazon. So I might, and they have a sticker pack. You know how I feel about stickers. So I might just get some uh, merch from there. And I heard they dropped new stuff today. So we'll see. But this week has been, I wanted to vlog this week because I don't know, this week felt really special. I was only depressed one day, which is great. And I saw Oppenheimer twice, I saw Barbie twice, and I culminated the week, I ended the week watching, getting to watch Beyonce live. Like, what a great week, you know? So I'm very thankful that I made it through the week and I'm thankful that like I got to go to that Beyonce concert and you know, I just need to be more thankful for things in my life for sure. Things get tough, but there are some bright spots for sure. So I'm gonna end the vlog there because I'm tired and tomorrow's Monday, which means it's movie Monday. So we're starting all over again. And I'm gonna change, wipe this makeup and glitter off my face. And I am going to go to bed. Don't forget, of course, like always, here's your spill. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok. And please like and subscribe because again, I really love doing this. So 
Until next time.